Paul again. I've got another new video to show you, and I'm calling this the Golden Angle 137.5 from the Duo 5 Vectors. In my last video, I showed how three-phase sine waves could come out of size 6 arrangement of platonic order. Now I showed that the vectors of the icosa were rotating about the vector of the dodeca, which I show as cubic wonder Plato cubes. So what you're looking at is basically a dual five vector system. Now in the geometry of plants, there is a very important angle, and this is the angle 137.5, a golden ratio angle. So let's zoom in on just one of the icosas and the vectors. So now we'll go into the top view. And for this, we can hide the Plato cubes. Now I'm going to show you a size 6 icosa around them vectors. Now I'm going to show a ring that goes around the vectors of the icosa. It could be basically a sphere, but I'm showing it as a ring. Now we can hide the size 6 icosa. Now this ring I show is based around the center point of everything. I'm going to rotate it around the x-axis to give you a better look at this. Now you can see that the vectors are sloping to the center point. Now what if I put a new diagonal vector in that ring? I would say it could be neutral to the other vectors. So let's go back to the top view and take a look at this. And now I'm going to add a yellow vector on the left side and a yellow vector on the right side. And I put a red ball in the center and one left and right. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees to give you another look at it. I'll show you a ring in the vertical position as well because we are looking at a spherical object. Now we'll rotate back to the top position again. And you can see that the yellow vectors are orientated horizontal. I think this is a good start. So now we've produced two more centers. So I think I'll make everything a bit thicker and make two copies. From now on, we'll just use the yellow golden ratio vectors. So now I'm going to make a copy of that ring on the right and move it out again. And I'm going to rotate it around the center point, 137.5 degrees. Now this doesn't make much sense until I show a helix. Now you can see that three red balls are arranged in a sequence around the spiral. Now I'm going to repeat what I've done a second time. I need to focus out a bit on this one. So copy along the vector and then rotate it under the 37.5. And after that we can give it a bit of spiral. So that gives us the fourth position on the spiral. So let's do it again and we make a fifth position. And now we'll go to position six. And we'll keep this going until we go to position seven. And we'll give it one final position, that will be position eight. Now this will keep repeating as long as you want. It can go to infinity. But this simplicity of wonderful order doesn't stop here. So now I'm going to show you this looking a bit simpler. And I'm now going to rotate copies of this arrangement at 120 degrees about the center. Now look at the result. I never expected such a wonderful result. But I guess the mathematician's forum puts my work down as hopscotch in between coincidences. Anyways, I've checked into this a little bit further. And I've found that it would do polar arrays from 3 up to 9. I show this as a separate video on YouTube. The polar array of 4 was different and it needs research. Now let's take a look at the curve. Before we go any further, I want to show you something. Let's whittle down and focus on them 8 balls in a curve. And we'll move in a little bit closer. Okay, we'll change them big balls into smaller red balls. And now I'm going to give yellow vectors in between the red balls. Now if you look at the two first rings, the vectors are acting as radiuses. So it's very obvious that the rings 
should get bigger as it goes around the bend. I checked the scale ratio and the scale ratio seemed to keep growing as it goes around the bend. I think we've got something that needs to be looked into further. I think there's so much uncharted territory on this. Anyways, I got thinking about how I made the first few spirals. Now the rings are put in an accurate position this way. But because the angle between these two positions are so great, 137.5, it's difficult to make a NURBS curve. So I decided to split the 137.5 into two positions. So I came up with these two arms that spin together at 137.5. Now as you can see, I give the arms colored rings. The rings are basically a size 6 icosa and the other smaller one is a size 3 icosa. Now I give the little spheres a sequence of color from red, yellow, purple and cyan. Now I've provided this with a helix but to make this helix I followed the spiral sequence of the balls and that's why the colors came in handy I couldn't get lost that way so to make this nerves curb you just have to make a point curve from the center points of the spheres now after you pass the first section of the curve the rest of the curve goes perfectly until you get to your end one and that one you have to edit now I kept following red, yellow, purple, cyan sequence going around the spiral. But what's amazing, there are five of these polar curves around the center. Now I've found some more interesting stuff. And for this, I've made the balls a little bit smaller. Now I'm going to show what I'm calling a curved wing. Now I'm giving it a polar array at 72 degrees and we end up with five wings. Now you can see that the wing lengths are different sizes. So now I'm going to make them look better. So look at this arrangement. Now we have five wings. This is a lot better than earlier on when I was showing single balls. These double balls are a lot different. So now I'm going to give it a polar array of 120 degrees three times. So look at this, we are having completely different results. Now we are showing 15 wings. Now remember what I was showing using single balls, I'll bring it back to show you. So I guess using double balls is the answer. I also think this is beginning to look like sunflower seeds because you can also see that the, the curves are going the opposite way and this is done automatic. I'm happy about that because I was thinking I might have to go the opposite way also. So I guess we're on to something new and important here. So now I'm going to show you the results of a 4 times 90 array. Now look at this. I think we're looking at something amazing. Now for a start, look at the strings of small balls and larger balls. You can see we have eight curved wings of larger balls and eight curved wings of smaller balls. And what's amazing is that the colors also have been arranged symmetrically in a perfect order. Now let's go to an array of five at 72 degrees. I think I'd better show you the animation because it's hard to describe. Now look at this when it's rotating around. The balls are all added to the same five wings and getting closer and closer. Isn't it amazing? Okay, now I'm going to show you the results of a six array. And you can see we have a new arrangement again. This is getting more interesting all the time. Okay, let's take a look what happens if we make a seven array. So this is very interesting also. Note that the color balls are in a curved arrangement and they're also coming looking like a straight arrangement. I think we have something here that needs a bit of research. 
I think it would be nice to see what happens if you change the angle slightly. Okay, let's have a look what an eight array looks like. Now I think this should be compared with what we show with a four arrangement. Now this shows eight wings of smaller balls and eight wings of larger balls also. And you can see all the colors are arranged tighter this time, but in a perfect order. Okay, I've made one final array and this is a nine array. So let's take a look. Now I think we're looking at nine curved rings times four, the 36 curved rings. Now I've noticed something else. I'm going to switch between the 8 and the 9 a couple of times and you can see the difference. Now you can see that the curvature of the wings are going from clockwise to anti-clockwise. Isn't that something? Anyways, I've put these out as separate videos on YouTube, but I guess there's no interest in this order. Maybe this is because academics might get expelled for showing any interest in anything that goes against chaos. It must be nice to be so superior. So this is Paul saying thank you very much for the few people that like my videos.